All right, guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing with an important question. Which head do you think is better? The Brodix Track 1 245 head or the AFR 245 head? Both these are for a small block Chevy. Both are CNC puller fully. And I've got flow numbers. I don't have dyno uh, results, but I'll go through a bunch of stuff with you just to give you some information about the two heads. We'll kind of do a head-to-head. -head. I flowed both, so I have that information and measure the insides. Unfortunately, I can't dynamo on two engines to see which one does better. This isn't a card. Now, both of these will later be hand ported by me. I have ported the Track 1 245 before and it ends up very good. I haven't done the AFR 245 yet. This is the first set for that. But let's get to a little comparison here, real quick. All right, before I begin the comparison, I do want to say I am a dealer for both Brodix and AFR. So um, if you're like, well, you're giving preferential treatment to one or the other, uh, I'm the same. So either one's good. I'm just giving you my opinion and you can make your mind up from there. Um, here we start off with the exhaust ports. The Brodex does the D ports and the AFR does their roval type of port. Um, I like the D ports better. They always seem to flow better to me. They've always done better. So that's my personal preference. AFR goes this way. There's a couple of things I like in this port as far as because I'm probably because I'm a porter and I know I'm going to alter both of these that I like better from the Brodix than I do the AFR, um, which I'll show when I flip around to a different view. But that's this. So um, something to think about. I do want to go over this real quick, too. If you buy these heads assembled from AFR or from Brodix, um, here's a couple of things you'll notice is a difference. One, when Brodix sends out their heads, You'll notice that they will have they will have a shim underneath their valve springs. Um, you have to have something between the valve spring and the head, otherwise the spring eats through aluminum. Brodux just puts a shim underneath them. AFR, I have to give credit, is better when you order their assembled heads because they have this. This is an inside diameter locator. It sits in the same spot and prevents the spring from eating it up. But what this does is this inside diameter locator prevents the spring from moving. Um, so it doesn't crash into anything. So in Brodick's defense though, I don't know that you actually necessarily need this because when you look at their pocket, um, if you have a 155 spring, it's not gonna move in this very much at all. So it kind of locates it anyway, so it doesn't need to be. But so does the AFR, but they've only got a small step here compared to the much larger one on the Brodick's. Um, since we're on this topic though, on these things, by the way, both of them come with, um, the same seals so when you order them they both come with the same seals except for remember this is from Brodix if you order from Brodix assembled you'll get a shim underneath your springs and you'll get a seal but here's the catch the seals are only on the intake side for the Brodix head when you order the AFR head credit to AFR they're on all of them all exhaust and intake so there's a little bit of a difference However, no matter which head you order from me, so if you I want an assembled head and you order it from me, whether it be Brodex or AFR, I put seals on every single one, and I always put inside dam and locators on every single head that comes out of here. It's just the way I do it. So anyway, there's that. Next thing, okay, comparison continuing on. The, the Brodex has a solid bar that goes across here, so both of these heads require shaft rockers. I think this is much more sturdy compared to the AFR. So the AFR just really just has individual pads that hold the rocker stand. Do I think it matters ter terribly? No, but that is still better. Speaking of which, the Brodix has helicoils in their um, rocker arm studs and AFR doesn't. So these are more likely to strip out, but in AFR's defense, it looks like you've got more threads than you do with the Brodix. So maybe, maybe not. Um, let's talk about valves too real quick. This head is a 40, the Brodix head is a 40-60 spacing. The AFR is a 60-40 spacing. So the valve spacing is slightly different. Uh, the Brodix head, you can actually run a bigger valve, which is the reason why they do. The Brodix Track 1 245 has a 215 intake valve, 1600 exhaust. AFR, 2125, 1.6 exhaust. So same size exhaust, bigger intake Brodix. However... AFR uses eight millimeter um, valves compared to the Brodix, which is 11 30 seconds. These are actually bigger than the AFRs, which means the AFR valve, same length, same hem diameter would weigh less. 
However, it weighs less anyway because it's a smaller head diameter. So that's this side. Let's look at the intake ports now. Okay, we'll start with this view now. We'll start off with the Brodix head. So this is the Brodix head looking down the chamber side. So it's pretty nice. CNC work looks pretty good. If you notice, they do something that the um, AFR will not do, but I'll show you in just a minute. And this is the AFR. You can tell it looks pretty different. We'll start off with the chamber, not work inwards. Um, I actually like this Brodix design chamber better than the AFR, which you're like, why? That looks so much better. From my experience, this Brodix chamber, the way it comes around like this, it actually makes more power and helps wet flow. Usually you'll see like, if you've ever taken apart an engine that's had an, a Brodix head like these chambers on it, you'll notice you'll have like a white streak that comes down here and into the exhaust. That's a fuel coming over and coming through, which I'd rather, if, there's always gonna be a fuel puddle, but I'd rather it be on here and leave out the exhaust side so that we're trying to contaminate the incoming stuff. AFRs get a little bit weirder pattern. And this part right here, if like they just stranded it, I straightened it a little bit here, I think it'd be better. But I don't think it's bad, it's different. However, AFR does have some advantage in the chamber. One of them being this. You see how, this is the Brodix one, so we're going back to the Brodix, sorry if I go back and forth. See this lip here? This is the top cover to the valve drop on the Brodix and it leaves a nasty lip there. I can tell you straight up that hurts, hurts flow every time. So we want it to have a smooth transition right into the top cut of the valve job. And this doesn't. It looks like they designed the valve job after doing the port work on the chamber, which is odd. If you look at AFRs, this is comparison. The top cut goes right in the chamber. There's next to no step. You can kind of see one there, just right here, if you look real good. Just, but that's pretty small. So pretty good there. So advantage the AFR on the blending in the seats into the chamber looks really good. And see on the exhaust side the same way, this back to the Brodix. Got your step here. And then if you look at the exhaust, next to no step. The other thing is, now this is a me thing, this vein, the Brodix has a straight vein, while the AFR has their wing going this way, it's kind of an LS design. Every time I play with these on the flow bench, this wing makes it flow more but I never seen it like necessarily make as much power as it gains on the flow bench. So yeah, it looks good, but I don't know that it makes more power than straight veins. Typically I like the straight ones. I'd prefer if it was longer and came up, but that's just how they come. Now, here's one advantage for Brodix. See what they did here? This, I didn't do, this is how they came right out of the box. That's a cartridge roll blending the valve job, the bottom cut into the bowl. AFR doesn't do that. Which you like so, it still looks beautiful. I'll try to get a better shot. Still looks good, right? It does, but what the camera cannot capture on this is there's a ridge. Like I could feel it. I could feel it right through here as so the air would cross. And I think these ridges right here are actually causing not to flow what it claims, especially on the short side. Like I could feel it. But if you look at the Brodix, just for me feeling it, I could feel it round in like it's supposed to. That, I feel sharp edge, sharp edge, sharp edge. So it's like hitting the bottom cut where the CNC lead fits out. And I think that's hurting their flow. Maybe their prototype didn't have that or blended it better, and that's why they flow more than what they claimed. But mm. anyway, so there's that. Let's look at the uh, intake side view, and we'll keep going on. Okay, for the intake view here, both of them take a 1206 gasset, sort of. The Brodix is actually taller than a 1206 and also slightly wider. The AFR, it's wider than a 1206. Same height, but it has a heavy corner radius. So you really can't gasket exactly match the two of those. Something to think about. But if you look down in the ports, so this is the view here. I might get a flashlight and try to get a better view for you. I may have ports of the AFR, so you can kind of see. The camera's not the greatest, but you can see. So, not bad. I'll try to do it from this one so you can get a better view. There you go. Now, if I look down at Brodix, that's how it is. Now, you see that lump in there? I'll try to get it from this side. I so, yeah. don't know if you can see it very well. There's a lump in there. Right there. It's right here. This is where the head bolt goes. Brodix doesn't leave them exposed and neither does AFR, but if you notice AFR, um, 
moves the whole port over to avoid that. So it's not that the head bolt's in a different location, it just, they move the port over to avoid that. Something to see. So there's that. But all this talk, what about how they did? Let's look. Here are the flow results. What you have here on this first row is the AFR 245. This cylinder two is actually the Brodex Track 1 245. So in the lift, this is the intake side and it goes from lift of 0.1 all the way up to one inch and 0.1 all the way to one inch on the exhaust. Now I did not flow with the exhaust pipe. I'm gonna hear a long spiel about me talking about how exhaust pipes kind of cheat up the numbers, but um, that's what they are. So here we are. And the, over here, this last column, in case you're wondering, that's the difference between the two. So it's comparing the AFR to the Brodex. So just to give you an idea, so like one tenth of an inch, the AFR um, is, is worse. So like, since it's positive, the Brodex is better by five. But then you look here at 200 lifts, and this is probably from the lip in the chamber that caused it. I talked about with the chamber. Down 14 to the AFR. Down 23 to the AFR at 300. Down 10 at uh, 400 to the AFR. Down 2. But at 500, or sorry, at 600, it's finally starting to pull ahead. And if you notice, 2 up, the Brodex is. 5 up, 6 up, 10 up, 15 up. So from 6 on, it owns the AFR. Below that, the AFR is better. Now, if you look at the exhaust, it's almost the same thing. The Brodex is slightly higher on the seat. After that, it's worse, 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 worse than AFR until seven. Then it's three, three better, or really four, then six better, seven, and then eight better. So it's not until the higher lifts it gets better. So there's your comparison as far as flow numbers. But the real story is actually in the measurements between the two heads. So let's look at these. This, well, let's start with this one actually. This is the track one 245 uh, numbers. This is just to give you an idea, it just helps me out. It's a 215, 1600 valve. It's got a 50 degree intake valve job, 45 exhaust. That's how I write it down. The bowl percent, so this is the throat. Sorry, not the bowl, but the throat percent is 92.1%, which may scare people, but I don't get too worked up with that number unless things are bad. The bowl, though, is 2.05, 95%. Like, what are these percents? These are a percent of the valve size. So it's 92%. The throat's 92% of the 2.15. The um, bowl is 95% of the 2.15. So that bowl, to me, is kind of small. That's why it probably picks up from porting. This is the area over the short side. Now, this is not taking out quarter radius, 3.19. But here's the big one. Look at that. I measured this over and over. The pushrod pinch is 1.2 inches wide. 2050 tall. So let me kind of give you an idea. Across here, so from here to here, 1.2. That's at its narrow spot. The height is 2050. When you do the math, not including corner radius, that's 2.46. That's small. So you have this big old head with a small pinch. That's the reason when I port this one, one of the first things I do is grind this out. And it's thick. I mean, you could feel between here and here, it is thick. So there's way more room to move this over. That needs to be bigger. So it's pretty, pretty small as far as this part goes. The other parts of the heads are also small like the bowl and stuff. But if you look at the AFR comparison as far as sizes, this is the throat percent, 91.1%. The bowl measures 2.125. That's 100% of the valve size. Good to go. Look at that, 2.125 compared to the Brodex, 2050. That's right, even though this has a, a smaller valve, its bowl is bigger than the Brodex. And you're like, well then how come this one should, shouldn't that be bigger in size? Because if you look at other measurements, short side, 3.14 to 3.19. So yeah, it's slightly small, smaller at the short side. The push rod pinch, I measured this as 2.83, but when I went back and measured it again, I just hadn't run on the sheets, 2.8. But if you look at it, it's 1.341 wide, and this is off that sheet, 2.11 tall. So that came up with 2.83. I'm sure if you take out the corner radius, it's 2.7 something, but that's still dramatically bigger than the 2.46. So you're like, well, wait a minute. That's bigger, that's bigger than these. How come this head's smaller? Shouldn't it be? I mean, they're both the same CC. How can this one be smaller? It's the vein. You got that vein in the bowl, which takes up more area. I'll try to show you. You see that vein? 
Look at it, it's taking up all that area there. Filling it in, taking up CCs. So yeah, all the measurements are bigger, vein makes it look smaller. Um, the rest of the stuff, this is just, I don't know, I keep this for my records. This is how far the short side is from the deck, 1.014, so about an inch off the deck, the track one. This one's 950, so it's deck's actually, or sorry, 970 from the deck, so it's actually shorter. Just kind of my stuff. Uh, but anyway, uh, there's your measurements. If you were to ask me, hey, which one do you think will make more power on the dyno? Remember, I'm a dealer for both, so I don't care. I mean, I'll sell you either one, but I'd be rather port both of them for you in any time. But if you said right out of the box, I think the AFR is going to beat it power-wise. Um, just because of the area at the push rod pinch. But I don't think it'll be much because AFR, I mean, the Brodix do flow more at the peak lift. So if you like peak power-wise, it's going to be close. But I still think the AFR is going to get it. Um, Torque-wise, I still think it's probably going to be the AFR. So not that there's anything wrong with this head. I have ported this track one head. And so you can see where it starts. So it's like 337. I've gotten this one, the best one I've done, and I've done a few sets, probably six of them. The highest one I've had went 354, so it gained quite a bit. So I haven't ported the AFR yet, but I'm getting ready to in a few weeks. Uh, better eye on doing that. But anyway, this is a long video, but hopefully you got to see some comparison. If you have questions, let me know.